Hi, I'm Dennis DiCicco for Sky and Telescope Magazine here at the 2016 Northeast Astronomy Forum in Suffern, New York. And right now I'm at the Stella View exhibit speaking with Vic Maris, the president of Stella View. You've got some new equipment here and let's show viewers what you've got. Okay, uh, I'm glad to do that, uh, Dennis. Uh, this year we've got a complete line of new imaging scopes that we designed you know, based on what, uh, what amateur astronomers and imagers are looking for. We had some innovative ideas this year to try and address some of the problems that you see or that imagers have when they struggle to get those perfect astro images. So here they are. Let's take a look. So we start off with our new 70 millimeter APO triplet refractor. This is an APO triplet version of our former 70 millimeter doublet. We wanted an APO triplet to have the highest spherochromatic correction. This has a center element of FPL 53. Now, it's a wonderful visual telescope. Uh, the focuser is a dual speed, two and one half inch focuser. Um, so it has uh, a dual speed action and being two and a half inches, no vignetting whatsoever. Now, we decided to stabilize the rotator. Instead of having the entire focuser rotate, you merely rotate it here. Oh. So that's smooth and it keeps everything in alignment. When we build these at our plant, we auto-columnate everything to make sure everything's perfectly aligned. But now, how do you convert this to an imaging telescope? Well, you do it with threads. You unthread the back end, which is the two-inch adapter and the inch and a quarter adapter. Any eyepiece will work. And we take our reducer flattener, our photographic 0.8 reducer flattener that uh, reduces the focal ratio to f4.8, 336 millimeters. This is a fast telescope. Yeah. And it threads right in, and then the camera will thread directly to the field flattener. So what's nice about having threads on this is everything stays nice and square. It isn't like when you put in a little adapter, tighten down a screw that's, and have something tip over on the side. That's very true. So some amateurs using the old two inch focuser, for example, would plug the field flattener into the focuser. And although it works perfectly for eyepieces and diagonals, it can sag ever so slightly. Yeah. You know, cameras are completely bolted together. When you put a lens on an icon or a Canon, it clicks into place. In yep. this case, we're doing the same thing. Everything is threaded. So that's nice, solid connections as well. Correct. Yeah, correct. All right. So once again, um, what's the price on this? Uh, that telescope, uh, Apo triplet with case, is $795. What comes with it? Uh, you get the dual rings, uh, which we had uh, developed to use with either Los Mondi or Vixen Rail. Very sturdy, one inch thick uh, aluminum rings. The dual speed focuser, uh, the uh, two and a half inch focuser. It's a rack and pinion, so it has a very high capacity. Um, it also comes with a two inch and an inch and a quarter adapter. And our very heavy duty airline carry-on case. The nice thing about the case is it meets airline carry-on standards. You never want to check a telescope, no. an optical piece of equipment. But the case, even though it's airline carry-on size, will hold the telescope, the field flattener, your camera, your diagonal, and several eyepieces. So it, it is a very roomy case um, and a very durable one as well. The beauty of this telescope is it's extremely wide field. Many imagers are looking for an extremely wide field telescope. Uh, this one having a very, very fast uh, focal length, working very well with 90% of the cameras on the market, which use the APS size chips. So this is a reasonably priced telescope that is a great imaging scope for the imager. But what about the real pro who likes to use a full frame camera or a variety of cameras, including full frame? For that particular imager, we developed something very new this year that is amazing. It's a sextuplet. It's a six element astrograph that can be used with full frame cameras. And so here are some of the features of our new SVS-80 sextuplet astrograph. Uh, this is a 345 millimeter focal length f4.3 full frame uh, telescope or astrograph. Now, we can mount back here a full frame camera. 
Uh, we right now are showing an optional Starlight Express SX694 with its filter wheel. This is a wonderful high resolution camera, a uh, beautiful match for any of our Stellarview refractors. We really like the Starlight Express, uh, bolted directly to the telescope. We have six lenses up through the optical train. Now our customers tell us what they want and we listen. Uh, the thing is, imaging is not an easy endeavor. Uh, those who image uh, really find it to be a labor of love. But there are many things about telescopes and astrographs in the market that add to the frustration of the imager that don't really have to be there. So we listened to what the customer said and we said, how can we develop solutions? So with the astrograph, we wanted to solve two major problems for imagers. One problem is uh, flexure. The other problem is balance. With this small astrograph, uh, we were able to bolt it directly using our CNC rings that we machine in our shop. We're actually bolting these rings directly to the tube. And then we're placing these solid CNC machined rings on riser blocks, which is then mounted to the rail. What this allows the user to do is to put this telescope on any length rail, and it doesn't matter how heavy the camera is, you're just shifting the t telescope forward to attain perfect balance. So we had to have riser blocks in order to lift the telescope up above the rail, and by doing that, you were able to take the focuser now and rotate it 360 degrees uh, without anything hitting the plate. So now we're able to position the mount underneath the scope anywhere for perfect balance, and we're able to rotate the focuser 360 degrees to be able to crop that shot perfectly. From here, we want to go on to why we bolted the rings to the tube. All telescopes have rings that are felt lined. Some imagers who are very critical have mentioned that the felt can cause some shifting of the OTA as the telescope swings across the sky. There's felt flexure. We've eliminated that by bolting everything solidly to the tube. Now, if you were to use a guide scope and bolt it solidly to the top, nothing's moving. I notice it looks like you've got this scope available in different colors. Is that the case? That is the case. You know, everybody's got their favorite color. Uh, this uh, telescope, this astrograph, is our uh, prototype. So the dew shield on this particular model has not yet been laser engraved. It's part of what we do. Once we machine these tubes in our shop, we then anodize them in either a beautiful red color or our stellar blue color, we call it. Uh, it's a special textured uh, uh, machining that we do, so then when we laser engrave it, it it's beautiful. Some customers prefer the classic white color. So we like to make these for, the, for them in the instrument white powder coating. We've even produced some telescopes in custom colors for customers because since we're building them in the shop, we can anodize them or we can powder coat them virtually any color. So what's included with this one and what's the price? What's included uh, with the telescope, and we can start down here at the bottom, is the Los Monte style rail, the riser blocks to allow rotation, of course, the rings are an integral part of the entire tube assembly, as this being a solid one-piece uh, uh, assembly. We have a specially customized feather touch focuser. It's a modified three-inch feather touch. We went with a three-inch focuser because we wanted absolutely no vignetting. It also comes with our C19 airline carry-on case. This entire tube assembly assembled is airline carry-on size. And one last thing we'd like to include uh, with a cost of admission is the adapters that the customer needs. We like to talk to our customers and find out exactly what camera they're using so we can provide the adapters so the customer does not have to search the market or have something custom made. We like to give the customer a plug and play package. The cost on this with everything I've explained uh, is $24.95. Oh, and there's one other bonus that I forgot to mention. Each one of these telescopes comes with our interferometric test report uh, taken on our Zygo phase shifting verifier interferometer. Uh, this particular one is, oh, 0.985 streal. I know we've got one more astrograph here to take a look at. You want to tell me a little bit about this one? Yes, this is our flagship uh, astrograph. It's the SVS 130. It's a 130 millimeter F5 six element imaging telescope. And this particular telescope has a lot of special features. We're using the Optech 3-inch TCF focuser, which uh, can actually move the draw tube within a micron, about 10 times more accurate than it needs to be. 
Um, this is a temperature compensating focuser. So once you get everything calibrated, it makes imaging a snap. It comes with the Optech focuser, it comes with the uh, controller. Now, this year, Optech is going to be uh, introducing a digital readout system, but unlike the standard stepper motor systems that you see out there, this will actually read the actual draw tube within a tenth of a micron, so you will know exactly where your focuser is at all times. And rather than having it go to a little meter that fogs up, this will go directly to your computer, so you'll be able to keep precise control of where your focuser is at the whole time, the temperature compensator will monitor the ambient air temperature and it will adjust the focuser in real time. While you're imaging. While you're imaging. Wow, that's great. So the price on this one is? The price on this one is $69.95 and that includes the rings, which we see and see in our shop, yep. the Los Monte style rail, all the features we've mentioned, and it comes in a very heavy duty, American made, roadie style case, made of 3 8 inch plywood, very heavy duty foam. If you're going to have this kind of an investment in a telescope, you want to make sure it's very very carefully protected in a case that's solid and padded and you want this telescope to live for a lifetime. And that's all part of the price? It's all part of the price. Excellent. Now we've been talking primarily about equipment that you have for astrophotographers. Yes. I know you've got something new this year for visual observers. You want to show me that? You know, it had to happen. <laughs> Stellarview is getting into the eyepiece business. And so what we've done over the last few years is we've evaluated what's on the market and we're introducing this year uh, for the first time our series of 100 and 110 degree eyepieces, which will shortly be followed by a series of 82 degree eyepieces. But right now, we're introduced and we're showing at need for the first time our 100 and 110 degree super wide field eyepieces. So we start with a 20 millimeter, 100 degree eyepiece, two inch. Uh, from there, we go down to a nine millimeter, beautiful eyepiece to use for deep sky objects, 100 degrees. Then we have our two high-powered eyepieces, 4.7 and 3.6. These are 110 degree eyepieces, so they're wonderful planetary eyepieces. <clears throat> if the seeing is very, very steady, boost all the way to the 3.6. So if it's one of those nights where the air is not cooperating, it's a turbulent night, you'll be looking at your planets uh, with a 4.7. But on a steady night when you've got super seeing, and it's one of those magic moments. You can boost it up with a 3.6 millimeter eyepiece with an enormously wide field of view, and you can see those festoons on Jupiter just like you're out in space. Well, Vic, I want to thank you very much for showing me all the new things that you have here this year. Well, thank you, Dennis. It's always a pleasure. Great. And if viewers want to get more information about any of these things or a lot of other StellarView products, they can go to the StellarView website, www.stellarview.com. I'm Dennis DiCicco for Sky and Telescope Magazine here at the 2016 NEEF.